This week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by, by PureVPN. Uh, protect your browsing history and your browsing activity from the, uh, the prying eyes of your ISP and companies like Google and Facebook uh, by using a VPN like PureVPN. Uh, and you have the ability to uh, report that you're somewhere else. So if you're on vacation out of the country and you want to be able to watch your Hulu or Amazon shows that are only available in the United States, you can still do that. And right now, PureVPN is giving our viewers a deal at $2.88 for a two per month for a two-year uh, service instead of ten ninety nine a month. Uh, it's a really great deal. And to get that deal, you can go to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. Avram has got another show and tell for us this week. I am very excited because I yes. always love Avram it's show like and tells. Kindergarten, it's like kin- kindergarten every week. Um, <laughs> so here I have the Sphero Mini Robot. Uh, Sphero Mini has been out for a while, but this is new. It is the, this is new because this is part of the Sphero Mini activity kit. Yes, it's really small. If you're familiar with a regular Sphero, which I actually have one somewhere in this house, but not in this room. Um, it's more like, you know, say the size of my fist per se. And yeah. this is, you know, you can see much smaller. A golf uh, ball versus a baseball. Yeah, I think that's a good way to, to, to frame it. So um, what's neat about this is not just that you have the robot, because you can, you've can you been able to get these for $50 for a while, but the activity kit coming October 2nd is going to be seventy nine ninety nine, 99 And what you get with that is you get a bunch of other pieces with it to make it really useful. So here, for example, are a bunch of pieces that my son used to build a little, little maze. Um, and... There are also like little, it comes with little accessories like this bowling pin for it to knock down. Um, and it also comes with these activity cards here. Uh, like here's one called a maze ball. And it, awesome. it tells you to, uh, it tells you to dry, to create a maze and drive, drive the ball around. Now, you might be asking, how is the, this is what is the point of this? So first of all, this is not just a toy; uh, it is a STEM learning toy. And you know, the, at the most basic level, there's there's two apps. There's a Sphero Play app, which allows you to use this for mainly just for fun. You drive it; you can drive it around uh, either using an on-screen joystick, or you can use uh, facial recognition to drive it, which is pretty cool. I'm having trouble getting the Bluetooth uh, running on my phone here to show it to you. Uh, for some reason, I think I may have to charge charge this up again. Maybe it's out of charge or something. My son is, I'm sorry to say, been playing with it all day. So, um, you know, this is the this is the app, but it's like not finding it at this moment. Uh, but what happens when you have it running is, you this lights up, and it rolls around the floor. Uh, because inside it's got it's got motors and it's supposed to open up so I'll show you what it's like you know, without the ball around it right so here it is um, it does not have a lot in the way of sensors uh, but it does roll around because it shifts its weight so and it has LED lights that can light up uh, different colors so, what you do with it, and by the way, you can see here that you have to take it out of the box to charge it because it charges over micro USB. Um, what you do is you can drive it with the app just straight like an on-screen joystick. You can use your face. You can use the accelerometer in it as a controller in games that are on the screen. So there's like a, a Galaga-like game where you like shoot things and you can like do it with your rolling around, you know, your, your Sphero to do that. Um, but what's really interesting is when you launch the EDU app and you can program it in a variety of different programming languages. So they've got a block-based coding language that's really easy to use. And then I think you can also graduate to actually text-based code with these robots. And this is true not only of the Sphero Mini, but of the Sphero Bolt and the Sphero and you know 
the various other Sphero uh, ball robots that are out there. Uh, but this is a nice a nice one because it comes with the activity cards and the pieces because just give somebody a ball and be like, okay, do something. Um, it's better to actually have an activity kit with specified activities to get your kid started. So um, this is going to be $79.99 when it comes out October 2nd. Uh, and I think it's going to be a good holiday gift for kids. Uh, my son really likes it. Uh, people, you know, when he shows, sh has shown his other sphere to people, they're really impressed. Uh, and this is a lot more affordable than the larger uh, Sphero Bolt that costs about 125 and is the baseball size. And because it's small, it can, you know, you can create these mazes for it. Whereas the big one, you'd have to find some really big pieces. Uh, so here they're giving you uh, some activities to do with it. Um, now, what I'm curious to see is, and my son hasn't done it yet with this, is how easy is it to graduate to programming? One of the things that we have seen with the Sphero EDU app in the past is that it is very, it is, there are aspects of the app that are very oriented towards school. So you'll go into the app and it'll say, download this lesson plan. And obviously if you're at home, you're not gonna do that, right? You're, you know, that's for teachers. Yeah. Um, but it's supposed to be for both home and, and school. Uh, so, um, you know, I have to see yet. I haven't tried this one, this new activity kit with the, with the EDU app. Um, but, uh, definitely like a lot of fun, a very reasonable price. Of course you could get the ball just by itself for $50. Although I think the ones that they sell for $50 are not clear like this. They come in different colors, kind of like the clear. Cause then you can see the light through it and, um, see the motors and everything. So, um, you know, we'll have a full review up of this shortly on Tom's hardware, but I have to say, uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, along with, you know, the other Sphero products, they definitely are, are good gifts for kids with a, with a learning, uh, STEM angle to them. And, and one of the things that's really cool, um, about Sphero is that, um, they work with a whole bunch of of uh, organizations to put together third party integration uh, like their their SDK is open. Um, so there's a there's a dot net uh, SDK. So if you want if you're trying to learn C sharp and you already have been messing around with a Sphero, well, you can learn to program in C sharp or VB um, with the Sphero with the thing that you already know, because you've already programmed it using the, the block language. You understand yeah. how it works. You can then literally move right into the other languages, including uh, third parties that they have nothing to do with. So I, I've always, I've always liked that about them. I, uh, one of the first, uh, first hardware related programming that I ever did uh, in .NET was, was for the original, the original, original uh, Sphero <laughs> a number of years ago. What did you program it to do? Um, I Well, it, it, in the beginning, it was just, you know, for those who may have used this, it was like using the old Carol programming language. Um, so it was, it was kind of like, you know, move forward three rotations, turn 90 degrees to the left, move two rotations, you know, uh, but then just for the, for the heck of it, uh, I started adding external sensors to, to keep track of it and make decisions based on it. And there's, there's so much, right. there's I so mean, much you can that, do. I think that's where it gets really interesting. I mean, one thing I, you know, if I were talking to them about future products, I wish that they would make, they would make a ball with more sensors in it mm -hmm. because that's where the programming gets really interesting when you can actually make make a robot do something based on external conditions. Yeah. And th this doesn't have a lot in the way of sensors. It has an accelerometer. I don't think it has IR. Um, so, you know, it would be great if you had one that had like light sensors and temperature sensors and, you know, facial recognition. I don't know how a ball would recognize your face, but um, now well, the app does, the app actually has that, which is pretty cool. You can, you can move it by staring at it. So there's a, 
I wish if I could connect, I could show you this. There's a thing in the app where if you smile, it moves forward. And if you frown, it moves backwards. Okay. That's crazy. Um, I love that. So, so that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. And that will work with any Sphero that you have. So if you have another Sphero, that'll work too. But, um, yeah, that, that was, that's kind of fun. We were playing with that yesterday. It's, it's like literally among the silliest things ever. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> I cannot wait to to do it now. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. So uh, uh, obviously uh, your son has been enjoying it, which uh, which bodes well for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's my tester for these sorts of things. I see how he plays with them. I see how long he plays with them. Um, so. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he really likes Spiro. He liked the fact that this came with things to build. Um, so, I th- and I think at the price point that it's at, you know, while not, not dirt cheap, um, it's a nice little activity kit to get somebody for a gift this holiday season. Sure, that makes sense. And, and like you said, I really like the idea that it comes with essentially a packet of ideas. <laughs> Because when yeah, you're just if given you just the give ball, somebody the ball, like, just do something. You're going to drive it, and then you're going to stop. And then I think that's the number one thing you really got to measure toys by in general, whether they're learning toys or not. Is is this kid going to play with this for more than an hour? Because if you're spending money on something that they're only going to play with like one time, or for an hour or something, and that's it, that's a waste of money. So, you know, that's. I think that's that's always the question for me with uh, with toys is like, are you going to get are you going to get more time out of it? Is it going to lead you to do other things? And and interestingly, um, uh, when Sphero decided to stop doing licensed products, it was because of that um, they watched app usage uh, for people who had purchased the licensed content, like the. The most famous of their licensed content, obviously, being BB-8. the BB-8, because they designed the BB-8 for Lucasfilm for the movies. Um, uh, that was used infrequently by everybody, versus the regular ball, which had a significantly higher uh, percentage of people who used it on a more regular basis and did more things with it. Uh, in the app, which is why they decided not to do licensed content anymore. And my guess is why they put this, this uh, package together uh, so that they could give some great ideas on ways to use it to, so that people didn't feel like they had just bought a thing and used it for a little while and put it on a shelf and meh. So that's, that's really cool. Um, Obviously you'll have a review coming, right? Yes, shortly. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing that uh, whenever you publish it. And as always, Avram, I look forward to seeing whatever it is uh, we're going to show off and talk about next.